question is, can D-Lab build a guitar amp out of a police radio? Well, sure I can. Let me show you how. So here it is, an old Lafayette HA 520 dual band type of receiver. So you had the 30 to 50 megahertz low band VHF, and then you had the 152 to 174 high band, and the police used to hang out somewhere in that area. It's been a long time since I've listened to it, but I bought this old radio at a swap meet for a pittance, and I thought, you know what? I bet you that I could turn that into a cool little guitar amp. So let's pop the hood and take a look at what's going on upstairs, and then we'll look underneath and see what we have to do to convert this thing. So here we go, top side. You can see she's a beauty, but the crown jewel in this old receiver is that transformer. Look at the size of that power transformer. Now, over here, it has a 6AQ5 output tube and a 12AX7 preamp tube. Does that sound familiar? So yeah, you could probably take this, eliminate all this crap, and make yourself a little two-tube guitar amp, right? So the main question is, Will this thing even turn on? I have not tried it. So before we get all excited, we better make sure that the power transformer is good. All right, so I have the bottom panel loose. You can see here that it says Japan right there. It's engraved into the bottom panel. A lot of these receivers for Lafayette, Allied, Realistic, so on and so forth, were actually made by a company called Trio out of Japan. They must have made a lot of them, and this appears to be one of them. Like this power transformer and this style capacitors, and right there, if you look, it says Japan right on it. Here's the output transformer that goes to the speaker right, right? Now, if you wanted to build a little Class A single-ended app out of this thing, you can reuse that transformer, because it's already going to the 6AQ5 tube, right? All in all, she looks clean, but when I get done, 99% of this stuff is going to be history. All right, so here we go. We're going to check out the main power transformer. It appears as though it's got 190 volts, and then they have a center tap, and they got two diodes here. Now I'm connected to that with my meteoroid, all right? And there's, of course, the 6.3 volt output for all the tube heaters, right? So I got my meter set up. I have a variac over here behind the scenes that you can't see because I want to bring her up slow so I don't damage anything because I really want that transformer to be good. So here is the power switch. Bam. I'm going to bring up my variac. Looky there. We already have high voltage. So that's a really good sign. So I'm up at around 50 volts. I'm not drawing any excessive current. Next thing I want to see is do those tube filaments light? I do see the dial lamp, which you may be able to see if I swing my camera a little bit for you. And if we zoom in where this control's at, you can see the dial lamps are illuminating. See it? So that means our 6 volt circuit is also working. So that is very good news. At this point, I'm going to shut it off because I know the power supply is usable. So that big monster power transformer is going to be able to power our little tube amp in the police radio. So yeah, this looks like a lot of clutter, but what I'm going to do is remove all that and if you look here, this little RF section is on a platform with some screws. So I'm going to yank it out, all right? We're going to keep the power transformer, but everything else is pretty much history. You know this filter cap's got to be bad. 6AQ5 and the 12AX7 are not in the position that I want them to be 
for an amplifier design. So let's flip around to the front. If you look at this guy, right over here, you have an output jack for phones. We'll go ahead and keep that, right? You got this tuning control that doesn't do anything anymore, right? It's, it's actually broke. The dial cord, if I can get it out of here, is right there. There's a the dial cord. So that thing was broke a long time ago. So we're going to abandon the tuning control and let's put our input jack right here for our guitar. This switch is not going to be a switch anymore. So we'll make that our bass control. We'll make squelch, since squelch means like high frequency, nasty stuff, right? Let's call that treble and the volume will stay volume and hopefully we can maintain the power switching. So it's not too much on the front panel um, identification wise that will have to change, right? And of course the built-in little crummy speaker, he's history, all right? Because if you build say a three, four watt little class A amp and you try to run that speaker, it's just going to burn it up. So he's out. So this is the point where you have to make a decision. Do you want to run this power transformer and just have a little class A 3 watt, 4 watt amp using a 6AQ5 and using the 12AX7? Or would you rather have a push-pull amplifier that also runs those 6AQ5s and maybe if you get this guy out of here and this guy out of here you could have the two 6AQ5s here with an output transformer power supplies over here your preamp comes in over here because we know the 12AX7 needs that input from what we are going to abandon the tuning control for and then you'd need an inverter tube somewhere in this area so you could actually get yourself a cool little push-pull 10 watt 6AQ5 amp out of this chassis. Alright, so at this point I'm going to clean this chassis up and make it usable for the new build. So this platform here with this variable tuning cap is out, right? It's in my way. All these IF cans, they're gone. I'm going to keep these tube sockets because I may reuse those if I put in a push-pull 6AQ5 amp. That's kind of what I'm thinking about. There's plenty of real estate here to build a very nice push-pull amp. So you would envision two 6AQ5s, maybe a inverter tube, 6AB6 possibly, a 12AX7 over here doing my preamp operation. I've got a great power supply that's just waiting for this to happen. So let's go. Okay, slice and dice time. So I'm going to get this platform out of my way. I'm going to remove these IF cans. And I'll set a new piece of aluminum here to build on for our preamp section. Power supply is cool. Obviously that old filter cap is out. So I'll get this thing scrapped out. And we'll cut back at that point and get our game plan. Alright, there goes the RF section. Got a big old cavity there, but what's really cool is we can use these same mounting holes for a new aluminum to build the preamp on. I found the best way to remove these IF cans is just grab a hold of them and twist them off. Right? No love loss there, guys. Carving out the underside, they have this beautiful red coass here, right? So I'm going to keep that. This is like audio grade stuff. So I'll probably use that in some future amp builds. So sometimes you can find some nice materials here to keep on hand for your next build. So that RF section is removed. I've made a plate. We're going to utilize the same mounting holes that that other section was on. And to install it, I'm going to use pop rivets. So the new deck is complete. Now, let's go over to the power supply. What I want to do is hook up this filter cap with a load to this power supply transformer 
so we can measure our high voltage. Next thing we're going to do is see what the output of that power supply is under load. So I've got a 10K resistor at 10 watts. I'm assuming we should have no more than 300 volts since we have a 190 volt center tapped type transformer here. So that's going to be under 400 volts, right? AC and then it's rectified, so on and so forth. But here's my meter. I'm going to bring it up on a variac, nice and slow. Watching the current, of course, make sure we have no issues. There's 117 volts, and I'm going to go right on up to 100 volts. Let me see, we've got about 242 volts. Now, I've unplugged the cord. We'll go direct to 120. It looks like we're sitting around 273 volts, which is perfect for a pair of 6AQ5 output tubes. So we've determined that the power supply can easily handle a pair of 6AQ5s running push-pull. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. There's plenty of room here, so we might as well get as much power out of this little amp as we can. So here are the two original tube sockets, which I'm going to use for the 6AQ5s. We're going to use this Hammond 125H transformer, and here is a little schematic for it. And you can see that we can either run 8, 4, or 2 ohm speakers. So I'll have to add some speaker jacks down here to support that. Here is my inverter tube, which is a 6AV6. My preamp tube will be your typical 12AX7 built on our new little aluminum platform. So we're ready to go, man. This is going to be a great little amp. Coming along great. Here's our output tubes, output transformer inverter and here's our preamp tube all mounted on the new aluminum plate okay ready to wire up take a look at the front got my new input jack we still have our volume with the power switch this would be treble and this now is base it's no longer a switch so one thing I noticed is that this radio did not have an internal fuse that we could reuse so we're going to add this old vintage bus type right about here. Power cord will go right back in here, but in this case it's going to be a three conductor grounded type. So it's time to get the wiring going, but this thing's going to fly together. I think it's going to be a cool little project. All right, front side, control line up, got our power switch here, which used to be the headphone jack. The reason I put it there is because that's where the power supply is at. I don't want a power switch over here to induce noise. The pots have all been changed, so this one is a 1 meg for volume. Got a 250k here for treble, and another 250k for bass. And this will be your input jack for your guitar. So, it's time to get a wiring. Before I start the wiring, I wanted to point out a few things about this power transformer. So if you get one of these radios, and you decide to do what I'm doing, and reuse that power transformer, you want to take a look down here. They originally had this jumper wire going over to the zero on the 6.3 volt filament line, right? And then that went over here to this E terminal and went to ground, all right? What the issue is, is when you hook up your new tubes, you do not want to have one half of the filaments grounded. Because if you do, this little ground balance assembly here that you see in a lot of amps with 200 ohm resistors to ground, is not going to work and you're going to have a hum monster. So make sure that your center tap for your high voltage, you got your 190, 190 and your center tap, you want him to ground. You can keep this E terminal to ground because I believe that's a shield in the transformer, but make sure to raise the 6.3 volts above ground so that can float and you can have hum balance. Filament circuit wiring is complete. You can see it's twisted and it's routed against the chassis to reduce noise. Over here, I used 20 gauge wire to the output tubes, and then here I reduced to 22 gauge for the preamp and the inverter. Next, we're going to start hooking up the power supply. High voltage to the uh, output transformer and the two taps here, and of course the output bias network for the 6AQ5s. So the wiring is complete. 
let me give you a grand tour of the modified police radio to amplifier circuit. Our AC comes in here, we go through the fuse, right? Then we follow these lines up and there is my main AC power switch. From there, it goes to the transformer where it is rectified by these two diodes. You come out here with the high voltage, goes to the filter cap, right? From there, you have the screen resistor, right? So that goes to the 6AQ5s. This little purple wire, if you follow him over, goes all the way over here to this 10K resistor. And he has another little cap, which is a 22 microfarad, to stabilize that voltage. From there, it goes to the 200K resistors, which feed the 12AX7. Then up here, you've got your pots and your tone section. After you leave the tone section, then we go to the 6AV6 inverter tube. Off the inverter tube, you got these two white wires, right? They go to these two capacitors, which go to the grids of the 6AQ5 output tubes. These little 560K resistors down here are to help to stabilize that grid. So it loads the grid slightly on the 6AQ5s. This cap over here, he goes to the cathode of both 6AQ5s. This is our bias resistor. It's a 360 ohm, 10 watt resistor, which goes to the cathodes of both of the 6AQ5 outputs, okay? From there, we obviously have an output transformer that feeds the two speaker output jacks. So this has four and eight ohm outputs. So that is pretty much a wrap on the project. You can see that it fit in here very well. So if you have one of these old radios, you could really turn it into a cool little amp. And right there's how you do it. Now here we are our top side. Now this little guy down here, little GE47 bulb, I was able to reuse that. So the front glass lights up just the way it used to. Here's our 12AX7 preamp, our little 6AV6 inverter, output transformer, and the 6AQ5 output tubes. And of course we know about Mr. Power Transformer because he was reused. Here's our added new filter cap. And I ended up taking out the internal speaker because it was a piece of junk anyway and just put the metal back in so that the front of the amp still has its original appearance. So I'm sure some of you are saying, hey, when you started this project, the radio had its own built-in SE output transformer. And yes, it did. And yes, you could have built a little single-ended 6AQ5 amp in this thing with the 12AX7, because that's what used to be here and here. And you could have put in your new filter cap. And of course, this transformer used to reside underneath the chassis. But the reason I did what I did is taking a look at this thing, look at all this real estate that you would not have been using. I just didn't think cramming everything over here in a corner was justified. So yeah, I beefed it up a little bit, so now it's an 8 watt push-pull amp. So next thing, let's get on the scope and see what it looks like. Alright, so here we go. Fire up the amp. See that nice little dial light coming on. My volume's all the way down. Our treble, bass, straight up. Eventually, we'll be using the audio generator. But right now, what I want to see is just the noise level on the scope when we have nothing applied, because that's very important. We'll see if we have any 60 cycle hum or any issues. Look back there, you can see the old 6AQ5s lit up. So let's bring up the volume and look at the scope. Okay, so there we are. I'm at 50 millivolts per division, and you can see we are well under 50. There is 20 millivolts. So we'll call that 20 millivolts noise. I'm going to turn the volume all the way down. See, she's clean as a whistle. All right, next, let's apply some audio to it. So here we go again. This time, we've got the WaveTech audio generator connected to the input of our little amp at about 150 to 200 millivolts input 
simulating what you'd get out of your guitar pickup. All right, so I'm going to grab the old volume here. Let's watch the scope. Hey, you can see me in the camera back there, huh? So look at there when I crank it. Kind of looks like the Sears Tower, huh? All right, so now let's bring up some trouble. Look at there. Almost a square wave. And you can actually hear that audio coming out of the D-Lab dummy load. Listen to this. There's no speaker on it. Just the dummy load. So while we still have this thing on, let's take a look at the voltages that we ended up with on the power supply. So here is our plate voltage. 265 volts, let's say. Let's see what happens when I crank up the volume. Barely even budges. Alright, that's cool. Over here is our screen voltage going to the 6AQ5s. Up here, after the 10K resistor, that is applied to the 100K resistors as they pass through that and go to the 12AX7 you see about 161 volts and that's applied to the plates of the 12AX7 now if I go over here right there and clip on there that's my little bias resistor Let's scale down a little bit so I got about 17 volts on a 360 ohm resistor I'm going to crank up the volume and let's see what happens when those 6AQ5s pull current. So you can see that this type of bias system does not hold steady. Okay, as you're pulling more current, you get a different voltage drop across that resistor, which is to be expected. But that's what also gives you that cool tube sound that everybody's after. So one little tip that I'd like to pass on, these two big orange beautiful caps here, these are the grid caps going to the 6AQ5 output tubes. So this holds true with any amp that you're working on, there would be some nice grid caps, right? So on one side of the grid cap, in this case you see 55 volts, and in this case you see 182 volts. That's because of the type of phase splitting I'm doing with the 6AB6. But if you're working like on a Fender Deluxe, you would see equal voltages going to both of those grid type caps. All right. But here's what I want you to see. All right. So let's say on this one, you got the 182. But when you go over to the actual grid connection, you better see zero volts. If you don't see zero, that cap is more than likely leaking and that'll send your tubes warp drive. So it's a really good thing to check, especially if you're having issues biasing your output tubes. So if you decide that you'd like to build one of these neat little police radio mod type of amps, here's the schematic. Now you can take a look and you can see that it's actually a very simple design. 6AQ5's running and push-pull. Over to the left, you see your input circuit with a 12AX7 going to the phase inverter. The power supply down there utilizes the power transformer that was in the Lafayette HA520 to begin with. So that saves you a lot of time and effort. And what's really nice is you get to reuse some of the tube sockets. And the chassis is already of nice robust steel construction and you get a free cabinet out of the deal so if you take a look of course on ebay you'll spot these little receivers for around 25 to 50 bucks and when you get done modifying it you're gonna have a super cool retro amp and your friends will say where in the heck did you get that well you know where you got that but you know where you're getting the information from and that's d lab have fun guys well there you go Another very cool retrofit of a worthless 1970s piece of equipment by D-Lab. You see, I always don't concentrate on the old wood radios. And of course, a lot of collectors don't like that. So I guess I'll have to see what the response is. 
for modifying a police radio, even though the police aren't on these bands anymore, okay? But what Marsha always wonders is, why are you posting the schematics and showing everybody how to do this? Right, Marsha? Isn't that what you're always asking me? Why? See, now, now she won't respond, see? But in, in the background, she will. But what the truth is, guys, is I do this as a hobby, and I enjoy it. And when I'm gone off this planet, and you wonder how to do it, you're going to say, you know, I wonder what deal I've never posted that information. Well, here it is. I'm not making anything doing this, right, sweetie pie? Right. Exactly. And guess who gets all the profits for what D-Lab does? She's Not behind me. The She's behind the camera. We'll see you again, D-Lab. So how much is a little police amp worth? I'd buy that for a dollar. I don't think so.